Hi, my name's Marco. I just moved to Grand Bahama to start a job at a new medical school. I sailed my boat, Dog Gears, here with my dog, Wilson. I made this little video that documents the trip. I hope you like it. After months of preparation, I packed up my boat and left my beautiful home in Tennessee to start my journey to the Bahamas. My brother Paul and I made it out of town just as it was starting to snow. But soon we were on our way down Interstate 75 headed towards Florida. After dealing with some trailer issues, we finally got dog ears into the water at a public boat launch just south of Fort Lauderdale. Put the mast up and then motored over to Hollywood Beach for some burgers and beers after our 900 mile road trip. Soon, Paul was on his way back to Tennessee with my trailer and to deliver my truck to its new owner, my buddy Denny Myers. Then it was just me and my half mate, Mr. Wilson. I spent the next day getting supplies and organizing the boat. I also had lunch over on Hollywood Beach with my former colleague, Dr. Gasler, who had driven over from West Florida to see me off. The reality of the situation was finally starting to settle in. I was excited, but also a little nervous. Then it was time to start traveling south on Florida's intercoastal waterway. On the first day, I motored a few miles to a nice anchorage at Golden Isles Lake. Along this stretch, I encountered my first drawbridge. You have to communicate with the drawbridge operators with your VHF radio to let them know that you want to pass under. In most cases, they open the bridge every 30 minutes when they know a boat's waiting. In total, I crossed under nine bridges on the intercoastal waterway, most of which were drawbridges. I made one last stop to top off my fuel and water, then I finally passed under the William Powell Bridge into the Biscayne Bay. After months of anticipation and three nights on the ICW, I finally arrived at No Name Harbor. No Name Harbor is a popular anchorage for boaters headed to Bimini. It's located close to the Cape Florida Lighthouse, which gives good access to the Atlantic Ocean, and also has a lot of amenities close by. Every single sailboat here has a dog. Or three. There's a nice anchorage just outside of No Name Harbor where a lot of the boats go that don't want to deal with the crowds. Although I hadn't initially planned on it, I ended up spending a night out here under less than ideal conditions. I knew even before we got here that Wilson was getting ready to be in for the time of his life. One of the best things about No Name Harbor is that you've got a great restaurant, the Boater's Grill, right at the mouth of the harbor. And it's only about a mile bicycle ride into the town of Key Biscayne. Here I am, riding my bike into town. Hoping to get some supplies, a little beer, and find out about COVID testing. So this little bicycle is working out pretty good so far. Harbor's full. 
was the Martin Luther King holiday weekend and the harbor was packed. The wind was predicted to shift 180 degrees in direction and that had me worried. Just before midnight, my anchor alarm went off, indicating that I was dragging anchor. With so many boats in the harbor, I didn't think I could reset my anchor, so I made the decision to motor out into the bay and anchor there. It was a lot rougher than I expected, and the conditions were predicted to get even worse. I discovered some pretty serious chafing on my anchor line, when I saw the predictions for 50 knots of wind, I decided it was time to go back into the harbor. I struggled for a while to get the anchor up, but I was eventually able to break it free using the winch on top of the cabin. Not long after I got back to No Name Harbor, the front of the storm hit. I was a little rattled by the whole event, but I made some steak and eggs for my birthday breakfast, got the all clear for Mr. Wilson, and then took an Uber into Miami to go to West Marine to get some chain to beef up my anchor setup. Let's go sailing. After almost two weeks of waiting out a weather window, Thursday, January 20th looked promising. So I took doggers out for a shakedown sail, refilled the tanks, and went and got my COVID test. It was time to pack up the dinghy and get the boat ready for travel. You ready to do this? So we can go to the Bahamas. About a dozen boats left No Name Harbor headed for Bimini, but the first boats reported six foot waves, and soon all but two of the boats were heading back into the harbor. I went out and tried it myself, and after I got some pretty big waves, I decided that was probably the best course of action. So I headed back in and tied it to the seawall have some coffee and think about it for a little bit. All the weather apps were saying there was going to be a little break in the weather around 9 a.m. and predicted two foot waves. So about six of us decided to go out and give it another shot. Not far past Cape Florida Lighthouse, it was already starting to get rough. Two of our six boats had turned back, but I decided to keep going and see how far I could get where I felt uncomfortable or I was getting in a dangerous situation. One of the sailboats that turned back that day was 52 feet long. That's twice the length of dog years and had almost 10 times the displacement. Waves continued to build. Dog gears kept plowing through and at times jumping over the waves. It was really impressive. Around 11, I caught up with the third boat that was ahead of me, Kalik Time. I knew one of the guys that was crewing on the boat, Mark Hebert, and he ended up taking a few videos of me while I was taking videos of him. There's a sailing vessel, dog years, getting it done on the way to Bimini.
first half of the trip to Bimini, I was basically following the sailboats ahead of me. But then when I passed the last one, it was up to me to finish the trip. After over six hours being stuck behind the wheel, the waves finally calmed down enough to where I could turn on the autopilot, run down to the cabin and grab some snacks that I had prepared. I was starving, but I was making good progress and that kept my spirits up. Land ho! I see Bimini. About three miles out. Get there right about six o'clock, close after sunset. Wild ride. Do it all again. Bimini is truly a magical little island in the Gulf Stream. And the water is unlike anything I've ever seen. I raised my Bahamas courtesy flag and then got a slip at Bimini Blue Water Marina. They've got good prices and well-maintained facilities. One of the main reasons I wanted to go to Bimini was that it figured prominently in Ernest Hemingway's writings about big game fishing. He wrote several novels there, including my favorite, Islands in the Stream. Alice Town is a quaint little settlement on North Bimini with a population of a few hundred locals. Every single one that I talked to was very friendly. It has several marinas, a few hotels, and lots of little bars and restaurants. CJ's Deli was my favorite. It's also where the Immigration and Customs Office is, where I officially checked into the Bahamas. Buildings and houses on Bimini are richly decorated and vibrant murals line the streets. Of course, the Bohemians are best known for their love of conch. I started off my conch culinary cruise delicious conch wrap. I got to know a group of retired cruising couples that had also come from No Name Harbor. They ended up setting off for the Barry Islands the day before I left Bimini. After four days on beautiful Bimini, the weather window had opened up and it was time to head to Grand Bahama. Beautiful sunrise and smooth sailing as I left the brilliant turquoise blue waters to surround Bimini. Soon Bimini was fading on the horizon and I was back to the dark blue waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Unlike the first leg of my journey where I motored my way to Bimini, I was able to put the sails up and do mostly motor sailing all the way to Grand Bahama. That's the halfway point. Ooh. A little gusty out here, but overall it's not too bad. Winds aren't quite in the right direction I was hoping, so I'm not getting quite as much speed off of them. What about 2 point or 6.3 knots right now? That's good speed. I'm averaging about 6 knots. I got 31.9 nautical miles behind me and 31.4 to go. These are a little job. 
bumpy, not nearly as bad as it was the first time. So absolutely no complaints for me. Looking like I'll get there a little bit after 6 o'clock. Everything continues the way it is. I'm hoping to get there a little sooner, but that's okay. As long as I get there, I'll be a happy camp. picked up, I started reducing the size of my sails, a process called reefing. This causes the boat to not lean over so much and makes for more pleasant sailing and generally better speed. Okay, I'm about two-thirds of the way across right now, 43 miles behind me, 20 nautical miles to go. Got a little sketchy back there, wind picked up, waves picked up. Had to put a double reef in the main, furled the jib about halfway. It's calmed down just a little bit, so I'm liking this a little bit better. But overall, things are going pretty well. No complaints. Any luck, I'll be there in a little over three hours. Come on, Grand Bahama. As I got closer to Grand Bahama and the conditions continued to improve, I felt the excitement start to build. But I made myself stay focused until I was safely in harbor. Every couple hours, I sent out messages on my Garmin satellite communicator to family and close friends with a map of my location and letting them know that I was okay. And then I got to send the best one of all. After six months of preparation, over 130 nautical miles of cruising, and living aboard dog years for over three weeks, I finally made it to Grand Bahama Yacht Club. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the journey as much as we did. Stay tuned for future videos.